It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. All righty, here we are, here we go. You know, I just exposed the media for what they are, and now I'm going to expose the NSA. You know, there's a bunch of veterans in the NSA who are coming out and saying that the uh, the NSA direct or the the president is not protecting the the uh, the NSA representatives. It, you know, it, it it's embarrassing that these people actually have the gall to claim that we should care. <laughs> I mean, here they are having sold us out. And now they're crying the blues saying, well, it's not fair because, you know, the president, he's not backing us up after we did his bidding. Well, who told you to do his bidding? General Keith Alexander and the senior leadership of of the National Security Agency are angry and dispirited. (laughs) Really? They're angry and dispirited by what they see as the White House's failure to defend the spy agency against criticism of its spy program. What? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You expected the traitor-in-chief to back you after he played you? He used you to get to us. He used you to violate your oath and you're still doing it today. And now you're whining because you don't like the results. You don't like the backlash. You thought you were safe. It was a big secret. Well, now the secret's out and you're mad. You're mad that he's not backing you and you want protection from us, the betrayed Well, you can be angry all you want, but you swore an oath to protect this nation. You swore an oath to defend us from him and yourselves. And you, all of you, are singularly guilty of violating that same self, that self same oath that you took. You violated it because what you're doing is wrong and you know it. Building dossiers, monitoring Americans, you can sit there and try to justify it and rationalize it and say it's all about terrorism all you want. But we know better, and guess what? When you're alone in a quiet, dark room all by yourself, you do too. Well, we had to do it because we were told and ordered to do it. Yeah, guess what? A bunch of guys hung at Nuremberg for that same nonsensical excuse. Regardless of what Bush or Obama told you to do, because, by the way, this treason has been going on for many, many presidents. Before that, Clinton. Before that, Bush Sr. You know, they're all traitors. But you had an obligation as a man of honor who has who, who claims to have integrity You had an obligation. You swore an oath to protect and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And you didn't. You have sided with the enemy. You have betrayed us. And it wasn't just that you gave up some information. You have actively aided and abetted 
and cooperated and participated and produced results for that enemy. And you are still continuing to do so. And you have the nerve to claim that we should be supportive of you at this point, that it's not fair that you're being that you're being chastised for your betrayal and your and your and your your treason? Really? You know, what made you think that he wasn't going to uh that he wasn't going to turn around and betray you too? I mean, if he'd sell us down the river, what makes you think you were going to be safe from that? The top brass of the country's biggest spy agency feels they've been left twisting in the wind, abandoned by the White House, and left largely to fend for themselves in public and in Congress against allegations of unconstitutional spying on Americans. Hey, guess what? You left us dangling in the wind, and you deserve to be held accountable for your traitorous, for your traitorous actions. You trade, you, tr- you have committed treason against the United States of America and against every citizen who you're building and, de- and developing a database on. You're still doing it. And now you expect us to support you? Former intelligence officials closely aligned with the NSA criticized President Obama for saying little publicly to defend the agency. That's because your actions are indefensible. No one can defend the indefensible. The Constitution's clear. You swore an oath to it. If you've forgotten what it says, go back and read it. They're crying that he has not emphasized that some leaked or officially disclosed documents arguably show the NSA operating within its legal authorities. Let me tell you something. You can create all the documents you want. You can put all the justification you want on paper. You can put all your rationalizations down, but we're not buying it and we don't believe it because we're smart enough to read the Constitution ourselves. And guess what? There's this little thing called the Fourth Amendment. And we don't have to have military degrees, and we didn't have to go to West Point, and we didn't have to go to Harvard to figure out what it means. There's been no support from the agency, from the president or his staff, or the senior administration officials. And this has not gone unnoticed by both senior officials and the rank rank and file at the fort says Joel Brenner, the NSA's one-time inspector general, referring to the agency's headquarters at Fort Meade, Maryland. Well, first of all, if you're the inspector general, Mr. Brenner, you should be blowing the whistle on this because it was treasonous behavior and it's still continuing and you still haven't come out and said to the American people, it took a guy like Snowden to do it for you. The weak backing from top administration officials has aggravated the relationship between General Alexander and the White House, where he has never been warmly embraced. Yeah, you know why? Because look at how a cop treats his, look at how a cop treats his, his uh, confidential informant. He doesn't welcome him into his home. He despises him because he's, he knows that that guy who's a confidential informant is willing to rat out his own friends. The NSA now finds itself without strong visible support of the president at a time of extraordinary political vulnerability, with the agency's secrets laid bare and its future in doubt. Quite frankly, the best thing that could happen to a whole lot of you is that you all be charged with treason and line up and lined up and hung at the upon your convictions? I have zero sympathy for you. Now you're going to go to the press, the ones who you've been spying on, to try to get them to publish your story so that you can what get America to rise up and say, Mister President, it isn't fair that you're not supporting that NSA. We have zero respect for you. We don't respect you. We're not allied with you. 
You are the enemy. You have become the enemy of the state. The enemy of the people. Oh, I know you consider us to be the enemy of the state. It's just that your definition of state and my definition of state mean two different things. We are the state. And in my definition, the state is made up of plain Jane, everyday Tom, Dick, and Harry's. Everyday plain Jane's. The self-same people you're spying on, building dossiers on. What do you think is going to happen with those dossiers, Mr. Alexander? I'm not even going to call you general because you're not entitled to it. You're a disgrace to the uniform. Mr. Keith Alexander, what do you think someone, either this president or the next tyrant, is going to do with those databases? Tell me about it. Come on. Give me a real legitimate reason. Or have you spent so much time in the bubble of D.C. that you don't even recognize treason and betrayal when it walks up and punches you right in the face? The simple truth is this. You sold us down the river. You're a liar. You're a Judas. You got your 30 pieces of silver, and now you're whining it ain't enough. Your intelligence should have been directed outward, not inward. You're supposed to protect us. And the truth is, if you've got all this data on all these congressmen and these senators and the president himself, then you have an obligation to expose that to the American people, to do your duty and responsibility, to protect us and defend us against enemies and threats, foreign And here it comes, key operative, domestic. And the only way that we are ever, ever going to support you and the actions that you take is when you turn around and say, we're opening up the hard drives on 435 members of the House, 100 members of the Senate, 50 or 100 people in the White House, and a couple of dozen heads of heads of extra-constitutional administrative agencies. Then and only then can you redeem yourself. Give us what we need to remove them from power and reinstitute some sort of a legitimate constitutional Republican government here. Then you might have a chance. But I can tell you this, there ain't no honor among thieves. And the guy you're following is going to go down in history as the biggest traitor of the United States ever known. There is none bigger. And you've helped them. Aiding and abetting the enemy. That's what you're guilty of. And now you're complaining because he's not protecting you from our wrath when we find out what you've been doing. How dare you? How dare you? You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. I've been your host this morning. We're going to take a break. We're going to come up with our final segment. Boy, this is like Betrayal Friday, right? Now we're in the next segment, we're going to talk about how the Tea Party has been betrayed by the GOP. You know, the Tea Party was a strong force in 2010. They made a lot of changes. Then they allowed themselves to be drawn in and corrupted, thinking, well, we'll just join the GOP and change him from the inside. But you got turned, you got corrupted, and now they're turning on you. You thought you could take the GOP over? How stupid. Get back to your roots, Tea Party. Stand up for independence 
and sovereignty. Man, I'm just railing today. These guys, it just kills me. Everybody, everybody wants to play with treason, but never live with the result. <laughs>